The Lord stands up. He is a great prosecuting attorney presenting his case against his people. First to fill his wrath will be the elders and the princes. Neighbors of Eleanor Bumpers held a prayer Not vigil tonight day, in front of the building where she lived. Also, the mood was somber as clergy and residents took turns at the microphone this. reciting and prayers. Those gathered locked arms in song. Jim Murphy, president of the Sedgwick Tenants Association, said he hoped there would never be an attempt at a bodily eviction again. The officer who, who perpetrated, I would like to see that he get a psychiatrist, uh, uh, you know, to, you know, to examine, to make sure that he's in condition, you know. Because I think it was a rational act, but in the first place, we didn't need that type of uh, action. We are uniting ourselves, writing letters, and trying to get to the bottom of exactly what did happen. Jones says one letter will go to Police Commissioner Benjamin Ward. It was earlier today, after a review of the circumstances surrounding the death of Eleanor Bumpers, that the police department made a change in the way police will deal with emotionally disturbed persons in the future. Whenever we have an emotionally disturbed disturbed person who is violent or dangerous and is in a confined spot or can be confined, that no action will be taken until a precinct commander or the duty captain arrives and then talks to the other agencies, whoever is there, family, uh, the emergency service, and he will decide what tactics to be taken. Johnston said the Emergency Service Special Operations Division has been asked to look into other forms of non-lethal methods of restraint. One example might be a grappling hook, something like this on a long pole, which would be used to grab the arm of a person holding a knife. Johnston called the death of Mrs. Bumpers a tragedy, but he said police officers had complied with existing procedures. After the news conference, Deputy Inspector Raymond Abruzzi again called Mrs. Bumpers' death a tragedy. But he said, it is tragedy that brings change. I'm Ronnie Livia, Channel 5 News. The cards and telegrams came from as far away as Texas, all in response to the shooting death of 67-year-old Eleanor Bumpers by a New York City police officer who, with five others, sought to evict her from a Bronx home for non-payment of rent. At her funeral today, her large family heard sentiments of sadness, shock, and outrage from clergy, public officials, friends, and family. this city, because of this death, there are going to be some changes in procedure. Amen. We're going to get sick and tired of, we're sick and tired of hearing that word, they follow proper procedure. Amen. In the midst of things not being what they could be, Sister Bumper decides that she make a statement. Her family members have maintained that Eleanor Bumpers was not emotionally disturbed, as Police Commissioner Ward has suggested. Her children say that life was not easy for their mother, who single-handedly made untold sacrifices to feed and clothe all seven of them. Well, I came to pay my respects and to express my sympathy for the family and outrage at this another blatant and savage example of police abuse of power. This is a mother, a black woman, and she represents all our mothers. So we come to at least let her know that. It's not all right that these things happen and isn't, it must not ever, ever happen. I can't conceive of a circumstance where in six or eight heavily armed police officers have an inability to disarm one woman who was not committing a crime, I might add. The outrage prompted by her death has caused the city to fully reassess its policy toward apprehending people it considers emotionally disturbed. But for Eleanor Bumpers, her seven children and 10 grandchildren, it is too little, too late. Chuck Curry, Channel 5 News in the Bronx.